Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. This is Real Talk with Tally. I'm your boy, Tally. So um, for today's episode, um, I no longer have my cameraman with me. It's just me. Um, but um, for today's episode, I want to tell you a story. I want to take a trip back to August 26, 2019. I uh, was late in my apartment, got a phone call from my cousin saying, Hey, my Killian said. For those of you that don't know, I'm Jamaican. Um, Mark was another guy in the Jamaican community that lives in Wilmington, Delaware. He was a father, a business owner, um, and a friend to me. On the 26th, I got a call saying, hey, Mark killed himself. When I first got the call, I said, that's not possible. Not Mark. Mark got too much things that's happening. Mark is worried about his son. Uh, Mark would never do that. I went, I got on my phone, automatically started making some phone calls, trying to figure out what exactly happened. Was this situation true or was it not true? I called a friend of mine who was Mark's nephew, 20 year old. And he confirmed to me, yeah, it's actually true. Mark actually had killed himself. And he's the one who found Mark's body because, well, they lived in the home together. I instantly got in my car and I proceeded to go to the restaurant that Mark owned in the heart of Wilmington. From there, I met up with three other guys. I met up with Mark's nephew, the one that I call. I met up with Mark's cousin, who worked at the restaurant. All four of us worked in the restaurant together. That uh, October of 2018, I got my bartending license, said I wanted to network in the city because, well, I want to make an impact in my community and I need to know people. Mark said, go get your stuff, and as soon as you get it, you got a job. I, um, when I got to the restaurant, it was me, as I said, Mark's nephew, Mark's cousin, and another friend of mine, another activist in the Jamaican community, uh, Ricardo Hilton. As I sat there, I hadn't seen Ricardo in a while, uh, so we sat there, me, Ricardo, Mark, our Mark nephew, uh, Sage, and um, Kenny, his cousin. We talked about Mark, we talked about the situation, and... I proceeded to talk to Sage who was there and he told me a little bit more. And I tried to be somewhat of a comfort for him in that situation. I don't know how much of a comfort you can be after you literally just watched the man you live with, your uncle and a big family member um, just die. Um, you walk in, shotgun in hand, and um, half of his face is blown off from a gunshot wound. Now this story isn't about Mark. So I'm gonna stop there. Um, so we continued to talk um, in front of the restaurant and I started now talking to my friend Ricardo whom I hadn't seen in a while. Ricardo had just had a newborn child and he was raving about how much he loved his son and how much he wanted to be a father and how much he wanted to be an impact um, you know, for his child and how much things he's trying to get done. Ricardo was a business owner, um, father, friend and so forth to me. This was on Monday. August 26. The next time I saw Ricardo was on Tuesday, August 27th, back again in front of Mark's restaurant. We talked and we again talked about his son and he loves cigars. So he was like, yo, Tali, you want a cigar? It's not really my thing. So I said, nah, we sat, talked, and if anybody know me, we bust jokes and we laughed it up. Um, that was the last time I actually saw him. That Friday, on the 30th of August 2019, I got a call, again, from Sage this time, saying, yo, my nigga, what's the bold name that we was with um, when, uh, at the restaurant on Monday talking about Mark? I said, who, Ricardo? He said, yeah. His next words to me was, they killed that nigga. Nah, bro, you tripping. <laughs> Like, Ricardo not that type of nigga. Ricardo not about that life. Um, don't know why I got no beef with Ricardo. Like, that would never be a thing. So again, just like until the last time, I got on the phone, I started making phone calls, trying to figure out what's going on. I called my cousin, um, who was very close friends, and we began to have a conversation to try to figure out was this true or was this not true. And um, it was confirmed. It was actually facts. Uh, my friend was dead. 
the next thought in my head was, well, damn, he's not about that life. Who would really um, have caused this man harm? <laughs> well, um, I'm currently standing now in front of uh, where Ricardo used to live on um, between 27th and 28th in Washington. And this is a story that was told by people that were on the scene. Ricardo stood here. He stood in the middle of the street. Pop, pop. He had a license firearm. He shot two rounds into the air. The police was called. The police came. The police stood on the corner. And when they came, they ordered Ricardo to put his firearm down. Ricardo proceeded in the middle of the street, bent down, and put his firearm down. As they ordered him to get up, he got up, the gun still on the ground. Halfway up, they opened fire on him, killing him instantly at the spot. We came, we stood. Young boy, you good? Young boy just bust his ass on the bike. But, and um, as I tell this story, honestly, guys, this is probably the hardest video I ever had to make because this is some real shit. And it just kind of speaks to the frustration of things that happen and how black men in our community continue to get murdered, continue to be victims at police violence. Nothing happens. Nothing get done. There's no repercussion. And you know, I'm not even gonna just say at police violence. Black men continue to get murdered in this country without any repercussion happening. Ricardo stood up and they opened arm, opened fire on him with his gun underground. It was a licensed firearm. And the crazy part about it is, as I said, when I first got the news, it was nah, that's not accurate. Not him. Um, Ricardo's an activist. Ricardo was a business owner. Ricardo was a father. Ricardo was a man. Ricardo was one of the best men that I personally knew. Ricardo was one of the most influential person within the Jamaican community. And the police murdered him. Nothing was done. And, um, you know, I saw the George Floyd video where he another black man was murdered at the hands of the police earlier this week. And I told myself I wasn't gonna watch that video. I don't even wanna see this. And somehow I found myself watching it. And I'm gonna be honest, it was very difficult watching that video. And I didn't think that it was gonna have the impact on me that it did. I didn't think I was gonna feel it the way that I did. But as I watched that video, I found myself trembling. I felt myself enraged. I felt myself in fury. I felt myself very angry at the situation as a whole. Because, yo, America don't give a fuck about black people. America don't give a fuck about black men. But we been knew that. <laughs> you know what I mean? We ain't no new shit. I'm just reiterating the same shit. Now, back to Ricardo. Um, back to Ricardo. After Ricardo's killing, there weren't any marches. There weren't any protests. There weren't nothing. It was just Ricardo dead. Police back at their precinct. I don't think there was a suspension. There wasn't any of that. Um, there wasn't any of our black leaders that came up and spoke and demand answers or any of that. It was just Ricardo's dead. Ricardo's dead. I remember earlier that year, I, um, I did a volunteer event at the Hicks Anderson Center in Wilmington. Um, and our senator, um, was there Lee, uh, Lisa Rochelle Blunt I believe her name is she was there Ricardo was there I was there and a couple other um, members of the community was there trying to make an impact trying to make a change in our community and I say this again to try to have you understand the man and the character that Ricardo had yet he was murdered and not a damn thing was done about it which brings me to another point I know this shit gonna piss a lot of people off I don't even give a fuck. I'm tired of the fake outrage by black people. 
I'm tired of the social media posting and the reposts and the comments and, and the shares within your stories of outrage, but yo, they're fake. Stop frauding. I mean, because here's the fact of the matter. Even in this George Floyd situation, I see the reposts, I see the angry people, I see the black man life matter. I see people talking about it, and, oh, this should happen, that should happen, X, Y, Z. But here's the fact. In about a week and a half, two weeks, a good 60% of the people who've been speaking about this won't even remember George Floyd's name. In about a month, a good 70% of the people who are outraged, who have been sharing stories, who have been talking, saying this should happen, that should happen, we should protest, we should rise up, we should do this. It's not. That's just banter for social media. I'm tired of people doing things and saying things because, well, they want to fit in, they want to feel like they're a part of the cause, they feel like they're fighting the, the cause. A repost isn't doing anything. You trying to join the bandwagon of being furious and being outraged about what's going on and not doing a damn thing about it, that's not doing anything. That's not solving anything. We're continuing to have the same problem. And why do we have these same problems, guys? I don't have the solutions. I don't have all the answers. But I know that what we're doing, it hasn't been working. It doesn't work. And we have to try something different. But before we can try something different, we have to first be real with ourselves. We have to first take a stand within ourselves before we try to take a stand within our community. Yo, stop the fake shit. Stop frauding. Like, if you don't give a damn, then don't give a damn and step the fuck out the way. And if you do give a damn, then step up. And our black leaders, <laughs> our black leaders, be leaders. Lead. We're dying. America doesn't give a fuck about us and you want to lead and you want to step up and you want to be men. Then be men and just don't be men and be retroactive men. Be proactive. Don't wait for another man to die before we start doing something. Do it now. I'm gonna stop this video now. Um, rest in peace, Ricardo. Rest in peace, George. Rest in peace, Eric. Rest in peace, Brianna. Rest in peace, Trayvon. And the list will go on and go on and go on and go on. Rest in peace. And black people, remember, America doesn't give a fuck about you. And before they start giving a fuck about us, we got to start giving a fuck about ourselves first, individually. Because it is our individual action that's going to cause a reaction. We have to first stop being reactionary and be proactive before we can start asking people to stand for a cause, to fight for a cause, to try to make us better, to try to change our situation. We got to change within ourselves first. We got to start being accountable. We got to start being honest with ourselves, guys. Like... On social media posts and all the extra stuff, that's just trying to fit in. It's not trying to make no damn change. Like, that's, that, that doesn't do anything except fulfill self-gratification. Let's be bigger than ourselves. Let's be about something that's bigger than us and not wait until the next thing happens before we do that. Do it now. And it doesn't have to be big changes, guys. It, it starts with simple shit. I don't have all the answers, but I know but simple changes. Simple changes, being active when we're voting because while well, we understand that, yo, we have leaders in place that we vote to put in place that, well, they're not doing a damn thing. And half of us, well, we don't even vote. <laughs> and then we complain when shit happens. This is Tally. This is Real Talk with Tally. This is Tally out. Black man, be safe. Black woman, protect your sons. Leaders, step up and lead. And again, guys, stop being reactive. Let's start being proactive because until we do, change isn't going to happen in our community. Tally out.